program director, Mr. Isham Abada, Ms. Fiziwe Khenkpe, board chairperson of the South African Weather Services, our special guest speaker from the National Disaster Management Center, Dr. Mapaka Tao, who is also a board member of the South African Weather Service, provincial disaster managers, representatives of academia, members of the media, management and staff of the South African Weather Service, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity today to address you at the celebration of World Meteorological Day 2022. I always struggle with that. This event is held the world over by members of the Convention on World Meteorological Organizations to commemorate the coming into force of the convention 72 years ago on the 23rd of March, 1950. Each year, the WMO's Executive Council chooses a relevant theme. And this year's theme is early warning, early action, a theme that shines a spotlight on the importance of climate and meteorological information for disaster risk reduction. Ladies and gentlemen, over the last 50 years worldwide, more than 11,000 weather, climate and water related disasters have been reported. While the number of disasters increased fivefold, the number of deaths decreased almost threefold since the 1970s. This is thanks to improved early warnings and disaster risk reduction strategies by countries across the globe. All too often, severe weather hazards cause impacts on infrastructure, agriculture, transport, energy, and health systems. As an example, the recent tropical cyclone Batsirai hit Madagascar in February, 2022, causing violent winds and torrential rainfall resulting in casualties, destruction, triggering coastal and inland flooding, as well as land and mudslides. Closer to home, heavy rains led to flooding in Ladysmith and other inland parts of KwaZulu-Natal province earlier this year, destroyed businesses and infrastructure, and also very tragically led to loss of lives. Heat waves are often associated with drought, poor air quality and wildfires, which in turn can exacerbate the risk of flash flooding during any subsequent rains. While these multiple weather hazards can compromise our food security, they simultaneously also increase socioeconomic costs and jeopardize sustainable development. As we've heard today, the sixth assessment report of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change indicates that we are already seeing an increase in severe weather events such as heat waves, heavy rain, droughts, tropical cyclones, and their influence on human lives. And this trend, which contributes to climate extremes, is expected to continue and worsen. We will see more drought, flooding, felt fires, and more risk to human lives and livelihoods as a result. It is furthermore estimated that by 2030, 50% of the world's population will be living in coastal areas that are exposed to flooding, storms, tsunamis, and other conditions that will increase the vulnerability of these urban communities and enhance the impact of natural disasters on their lives and on their livelihoods. Now, ladies and gentlemen, as weather, climate, and water extremes have become more severe in many parts of the world, South Africa can attest to the number of weather-related disasters we have experienced, not just over the past season, but also over the past decade. Our earlier presentations today 
served to indicate how the South African Weather Service, in partnership and collaboration with other stakeholders, has had to deal with several severe storms and their impacts. While the international community strives to reach all citizens with early warnings, the truth is that a third of the world's population is still not covered by early warning systems. It is said that only 40% of WMO members have multi-hazard early warning systems and that large gaps exist in many countries regarding weather observations, which are essential in producing accurate early warnings locally and globally. The international weather community under the umbrella of the WMO advocates that greater coordination between national meteorological and hydrological services, disaster management services, and development agencies is fundamental to improve prevention, preparedness, and response. In this regard, South Africa is heeding this call by making inroads in collaborating with stakeholders at a national, provincial, and municipal disaster management level, as well as with weather sensitive industries in the country to continuously improve the prevention of weather related disasters, create a prepared society and respond on time when disasters happen. Behind the message of destruction and damage today, the message of hope. Improved multi-hazard early warning systems have led in our own country to a significant reduction in mortality. Today, we are better equipped and better prepared to save lives. We are assisted by supercomputers and satellite technology that have improved our forecasting ability tremendously. We are able to tailor services for specific purposes, building our expertise on research over decades. Even artificial intelligence is now complementing human ingenuity, and this, along with national, regional, and international coordination, enables us to mobilize communities quicker to resist disasters. In addition, traditional media and social media assist us to reach an even wider audience than ever before, making people more aware and alert to heed impending disasters. We have seen that the progress in climate science enables us to more accurately predict several months in advance phenomena such as the recent La Nina that we have seen this summer. As explained by Dr. Christian Engelbrecht, these forecasts inform decision making in climate sensitive sectors such as agriculture, health, where waterborne diseases can be a challenge. And of course, in departments that are responsible for water management. South Africa is joining the world meteorological community to improve the provision of user-friendly early warning services on air quality, ultraviolet radiation, and environmental hazards. Furthermore, for us to address the challenges in South Africa, we need to collaborate on many levels, both nationally and internationally. We need to strengthen collaboration between meteorological services, the private sector, academia, and users to forecast and ensure that our forecasts are accurate, timely, accessible, and of course, valuable. The challenge of climate change and extreme weather is too big for any one country to tackle alone. People-centered, gender-sensitive, multi-hazard early warning systems are a highly effective way of strengthening adaptation and resilience. And it is estimated that investments in these services can save lives and assets worth 10 times their cost. Ladies and gentlemen, as always, partnerships are key. And impact-based forecasting as promoted by the South African Weather Service will continue to transform con complex scientific information into accessible messages. 
that enable humanitarian interventions that will make a real difference to people's lives on the ground. South Africans need to be prepared and able to act at the right time and in the appropriate manner. In this way, many lives will be saved and livelihoods protected, especially amongst those who are most vulnerable to climate change and its impacts on communities. Ultimately, together, we will contribute to a better life for all. I thank you.